Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman, Wargamer. It's an open the box and it's an unboxing of a game that's been around for a little while but has recently had its new printing published and it is Skies Above the Reich, a solitaire air war game designed by Jerry White and Mark Astard with this cover illustration by Antonis Kouridis and published, of course, by GMT Games. So what's all this about? Bombers fill the sky and the pressure is on. Hundreds of enemy bombers fly in tight formation, each bristling with a 50 caliber armament aimed in every direction. Can you make a dent in the American air campaign? And if you do, Will you still have a staffel to send home? Skies Above the Reich is a solitaire game depicting a Luftwaffe squadron of BF 109s struggling to deter and destroy the relentless daylight raids over Germany during World War II. Each fighter in your staffel is represented by a stickered block, and together they must confront the mighty combat box formation of the United States Army Air Force. This tactical game is a broad strokes depiction that presents the arc of the desperate air war. Stretching from late 1942 to early 1945, Skies Above the Reich follows that trajectory in a series of missions strung together to make a campaign. Each mission will take half an hour or more to play, while a campaign can last anywhere between 6 to 60 missions. In each mission, you must take altitude and armaments into consideration, as well as a choice of weapon, angle of attack, and especially the determination of pilots to knock down those bombers and to survive. The combat box is a prickly beast, both a target and a lethal weapon, and your job is to figure out how to throw your pilots against it. Can you loosen the formation and knock bombers out? allowing your pilots to pounce on lone bombers? Will you choose rockets as your weapons of choice? Or will you maneuver your fighters to come out of the sun and wreak havoc on the Americans? Will you keep your pilots together to attack like a sledgehammer? Or will you split them up to come at the bomber formation from multiple angles? And what will you do if the bombers are protected by escorts? And a quote here from Adolf Galland, one of the German World War II aces. It was typical of the spirit of the German fighter pilots that they did not put up with the enemy's superiority, that they did not resign themselves, that they proposed to attack the death-dealing bombers to the point of self-sacrifice. Here we can see, I think, uh, the pursuit player aids and a couple of the maps, different size maps in this, I think. So in the box, one rule book, one advanced rule book, one situation manual, one 22 by 34 inch board, double sided, and one 17 by 22 inch board, again double sided, four 8.5 by 11 inch pursuit maps, three player aid cards, an off map display, pilot roster pad, wooden blocks, one sticker sheet, and two 10 sided dice. I thought, though, there are cards in this as well, but we'll soon find out. Game scale, units, of course, individual fighters, time, seconds and minutes, players, one to two. So I think you can play cooperatively with another German pilot. And the map is areas. On the game meter, the complexity is five out of nine, which is a medium. And the solitaire suitability, of course, nine out of nine. Ages 14 plus, and as mentioned, the game credits here, game design and development by Jerry White and Mark Astid. Map, counters, stickers and layout, Jerry White, and the cover art, as mentioned earlier, Antonis Karidis. Right, let's get the shrink wrap off. The shrink wrap is off, so let's open the box. And the first thing we see are the rules. Let's have a look at those. 
Here they are. They come in at 59 pages, full colour and matte paper. So we'll have a quick look through here. We've got the introduction explaining things like campaigns, basic and advanced game formations, the BF109s, any auxiliary fighters you might be able to use. Getting started to put on the stickers, little components box there. Then we're into the campaign and how to set that up because it's a series of missions. How to set up the missions. And then determine the situation. There's the situation manual, which we'll have a look at after this. And how that all works. How to set your game table up. What you'll need. And then how to play the mission itself with a uh, outline of the mission sequence of play. A lot of this is just pages of uh, pictures with explanations rather than pages of text so looking at the formation map what the spaces and boxes mean and elements there are two double-sided maps of different sizes this is the smaller one now to move Who returns? Escorts, do they arrive and when do they leave? Escort stations and their actions, how the escorts move and peel off. And aerial combat. Now that's resolved. What the results can be. How to recover. There's the dreaded fake boxes. Blasts from bombs and rockets, JU-88, Asher Smith 410 cannon, long-range blast effects, and an example of that. And then flak. Cohesion checks, that's for the bombers, whether or not they fall out of formation or destroyed. So as you can see, just plenty of big font pictures, approach, what sort of mode the fighters are in, determined or evasive, maneuver, directions of maneuver, climbing, diving, rolling, that sort of thing, and how to apply that depending on how you're attacking that formation. Collision. Attack advantages. So you can have a, a rotter advantage or a position advantage. Swarm advantage. Attack procedure, lethal level. An example of that. And then, yes, attack cards. I did say when we did uh, the beginning of the video, they didn't mention the cards. And I was pretty sure they are in the box, and they are. Attack results. So damage. Hit. Pass through. Other attack results with an example. Whether or not you can continue your fire. Well, actually, I think it might be continuing fire of the bomber as you fly past. But we'll find out. Here's an example. Oh, a couple of examples. Event text. Breakaway. And mission tally. Yes, the fake boxes, which you'll know and uh, love is not 
quite the right word, but uh, they're in all of these games. Tallying the points, stuff or commands, difference between what an expert and, and a green pilot can do, and them stickers, how to put them on properly. And some helpful advice with Staffel Erosion and the Staffel Erosion table. There we go. Them's the rules. Next up is this situation manual, and you'll use that every time you set up a mission, I believe. And depending on whether the bombers are inbound, they're near the target, or they're outbound, depends on what situation map you're going to use. So they're all sort of done for the different maps. This is map one, so you're going to roll a die. This is for near target. Here's one for bombers on their way home. Tactical points for that mission and the flight limit, whether or not there are any contrails. So for every situation and every map, there's this situation manual, which is pretty similar all the way through you'll use and then at the end how to win and lose depending on what sort of campaign you're doing or two players and over here is the blank pilot roster in case you want to fill in your own pilots because as you'll see the pilot roster with the game has these already filled in and there we are. Next up, we've got a 15 page advanced rule book. So we've got the advanced game rules and rules for two players and some notes at the back with an index. Here are these pursuit maps, which we'll see in a moment which you're going to use to, I think, pursue bombers that fall out of formation. You can go in for the kill, the damage boxes, experience points and victory points for the advanced game, and the pursuit, how that works. Quite a little bit on that. Next pass and regrouping. Formation turn, the JU-88 uh, Messerschmitt 410 cannon. Interference, this is an optional rule, as is the shrinking box rule. And then rules for two players. I think basically you're just spitting up the stuffle. And this tells you how that works. Not too much on that. Taking turns. And then we've got some design notes and at the back a useful little index them's the advanced rules a single sheet of stickers so not too many to put on them blocks here's that pad of pilot roster and staffel log sheets so here we can see the filled in pilots and on the other side we've got the staffel log and quite a nice amount of those next up two sheets of counters here's the first sheet on the usual brown thicker stock and the other side and here's sheet two and the other side of that one next up we have this off map panel goes to the side of the map you are using so you can see a little bit more table space needed 
But here you can see we've got the turn track. And a good thing about all these displays and player aids is that they've all got page references for the rules for you to look up in case you're not sure what's going on. But here, as I say, is the turn track. Here are those dreaded fate boxes that I know all about, as at the time of videoing this, I am uh, recording a playthrough of Skies Above Britain and the escort display down the bottom there. Here's the first of these pursuit maps, which allow you to go after a sort of lone bomber that's fallen out of formation. And this is the one for 1942. And on the other side, 43, 44. This one's also labeled green. I'll find out later what that means. And on the other side, 44 and 45. This time, silver. Might be something to do with the plane, actually. Come to think about it. Next, we have a trifold player aid. And on these two parts are sort of more informational stuff, showing you the difference between the evasive and determined mode, the auxiliary fighters in their different modes, the attachments, and the altitude block. Again, all with page reference numbers. And this side, we've got some summaries for bomber damage, collision check, and element cohesion. And these have got sort of lettered references, which mean it refers to a player aid. And opening this up, we can see some more information boxes about escorts, detonation, cohesion, attack advantage, situation, hit and proximity. These damage markers, which again, if you've played any of the Skies or Storm games, you'll be familiar with maneuver the turn track markers and expert and green pilots on the other side we've got bomber damage collision check the element cohesion and opening that up we have the aerial combat table so these escorts attacking our planes could be P-38s, P-47s or Spitfires, P-51s. And over here, the blast procedure for the bomb and rocket detonations. Next, we have a bifold player aid showing you the instructions for setting up a basic game, uh, advanced game and two players. And on the other side, how to set up your mission and the operations menu. Once again, these are all labeled. And the last bifold player aid, and you may be thinking, crikey, there's a lot of those, but the whole idea of this is to make the game so much easier to learn and flow. And as you know, I'm a big fan of this series of games. So here we've got the mission sequence of play and the attack phase sequence of play. And on the other side, for those doing it, the pursuit sequence of play. Next up, we've got the map boards. So let's have a look at those. Here's the first one. It's the smaller map board, map one, quite abstracted. You've got the bomber formations here with these elements here. And I think these numbers determine how dangerous it is to attack into that element. And we can come in from the flanks or the nose or from behind. And let's show you the other side. So here's map two. So it's a nice, nice size. And you can see it's a different sort of formation for the bombers. And that's because I think as time goes on, the formations change, the tactics and strategies change. Once again, we've got the two flank attacks, nose and tail. 
Here's the other map board, much bigger. And it's a little bit bobbly at the moment until I weigh that down. So this, I believe, is the same size as a sort of standard map that you'll get in a GMT game. But this is formation map three, much larger formation. But once again, we've got flank attacks and nose and tail attacks. And then lastly, on the other side, we've got map four. And yes, yes, here's the silver and the green on the other side. I get it now. <laughs> map four. And as we get to the bottom of the box, we have a bag of baggies. Two D10s. And that bag of blocks. The blue ones, as we saw earlier, are the altitude markers. And lastly, here we've got a couple of sealed deck of cards. So let's have a look at those. So sorted out, we've got the oblique attack, that's your flank attacks, and you're going to see results for when you do that. I can't remember what that means, but uh, this I think is a hit on you, on the Germans, and this is a hit on the bomber. So don't quote me, that's what it is in the uh, skies above Britain. So we've got a few of those. All different results. We've got one for the nose attacks. So once again, same sort of thing. And not forgetting tail attacks. A lot more hits on here, it looks like. Then lastly, we've got this continuing fire. Here we've got something that could happen if you happen to be doing that maneuver or coming out the sun or whatever, I think. And that's it. That's everything in the box. So this has been an open the box, an unboxing of the new printing of Skies Above the Reich, a solitaire air war game designed by Jerry White and Mark Asted and published by GMT Games. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and you found it interesting. If you did and you're not one of the 40% that haven't yet subscribed, it would be wonderful if you would consider doing that because it does help the channel. The other thing that's of great help is to push that like button, the thumbs up underneath the video, that tickles the algorithm. And if you wish to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push the bell, but make sure you push all notifications. Otherwise, YouTube might forget to tell you. As always, I encourage you to leave a comment. I know this has been out for a little while now, but uh, I now have the set, as it were. This one, Storm Above the Reich and Skies Above Britain, which I'm currently videoing at the time of doing this unboxing. And I'm thoroughly enjoying Skies Over Britain. So it looks like I'm going to have fun with the other two as well. But what do you think? Let me know. Because, as I keep telling you, I love to read them. Thanks, as always, to my subscribers thank you so much and as always a quick thing at the end just before you go if you wish to support the channel a little bit further you can buy the channel a coffee and there's a link for that in the description or if you wish you can push the super thanks button that should be underneath the video either along the bottom there or if you can't see it push the three little dots and it'll be there either of those if you decide to do that really do help the channel to keep ticking along. So thanks. Right then, got some stickering to do. Not too much though, and some punching and clipping of counters. And that'll keep me busy for a little while. And I hope you can join me for the next video. So until then, as always, 
You take care and goodbye.